Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Champion Slot Machine. I'm your host, Fizzledrix, and with me today, as usual, is Bacchano Reese, as well as a few members of my Twitch community. And what we're going to do today is what we do every time on this channel, and that is we're going to roll our slot bot here. He's going to tell us two regions and two champions, and we're going to use that to build a 40-card deck in Legends of Runeterra. We're going to talk about what the cards do, what uh, strategies we can build with them. We'll go over individual card selection, and then we'll play uh, it on our diamond rank ladder. I uh, just reached diamond with zero LP, so uh, I'll just play games in, in ranked. I don't care. We'll skip the norms today. Uh, so uh, if you like the content, thank you very much for... Uh, taking a look please hit the like button and if you want to see more hit the subscribe button and if you want to be a part of the deck building process catch me on twitter or twitch jeez i don't twitter <laughs> all right so without further ado let's see who will we get Ooh, i'm excited already oh, my corpses of them all never had luck Never needed. Ooh. Interesting. You'll need to King install. Gangplank Echo. Yeah, Gangplank Echo. Huh. All right. Well, we do have the Echo problem, which is that there's only like three cards in P and Z that uh, predict. So that'll be interesting. But I always like Bilgewater and P and Z as regions. Gangplank is a fantastic champion, so this will be an interesting deck build. Let's pop over to Legends of Runeterra and talk about what these champions do. So, our first champion is Echo. as a 4 mana 4-2. We featured him on this channel before. He has Quick Attack, he has Strike, creating a Fleeing Time Trick when hand, which is a 2 mana fast speed spell that says predict, oh sorry, burst speed spell that says predict and then draw one. And then uh, when you predicted 4 plus times, he levels up. When he levels up, he puts Corona Breaks in the deck, which are 3 mana slow speed spells that say we've all our allies that died this round then rally it's probably one of the most powerful cards in this game which is why it requires you to level up a champion and then look for it to even find it and when champion is uh, echo is leveled up he gets plus one plus one like most champions and uh this time the time trick actually costs zero uh and his uh champion spell is a called shot which draws one and puts a parallel convergence in your deck and parallel convergence is a four mana slow that starts a free attack with an exact ephemeral copy of each ally and that is echo in a nutshell as uh it's pretty obvious to tell from his level up condition he really likes it when you predict the problem is most of the predict in this game are in shirima in fact the only predict in this game in this region is the time trick card that he generates plus you can put it in your deck of course and then uh the impractical perfectionist or practical perfectionist i don't know why i said she's impractical she's far from impractical uh which is a three mana four two that says play predict create three copies of the chosen card in your deck it's a tough card to make good is mostly just because it has four, uh, two toughness for its value and uh, might be necessary in order to make this deck work. So just for starters, since we already know what Echo does and we've already talked about the two cards that you usually play with him, let's just go ahead and throw them in here before we talk about Gangplank. Uh, and then our second champion is Gangplank, which is a 5 mana 5-4. He recently got nerfed. He has Overwhelm and he, when he's summoned, he summons a Powder Keg. <laughs> which is a zero mana zero one that uh, stacks and all of spells and skills deal one extra damage, which also destroys this powder kick. Uh, and uh, when he's, his level up condition is you've damaged the enemy nexus in five different rounds, which is not easy to do, but a little bit easier with a card called Ballistic Bot, which we'll get to in a moment. And then uh, his leveled up condition says uh round start when i'm summoned or round start summon a powder keg and he has when he attacks he deals one damage to all enemies in the enemy nexus which of course is amplified by his cap powder kegs and his champion spell is one mana parlay deals one damage to anything and if it kills the unit it deals one damage to the enemy nexus and so those are our two champions and so we're going to go ahead and keep them in mind as we just decide on a strategy to play with them let me go ahead and take a sip of this one I now give chat permission to just bombard me with ideas. So if we're going to play a predict get deck, we usually play Kitty, which is a one mana two one. Says when I'm summoned, create a Hexite Crystal in the bottom ten cards of your deck. And Hexite Crystal is a ridiculous card. It's a two mana fast that says if you see me in a prediction, draw me, which is crazy. And if it deals two damage to the enemies and the enemy nexus. Fantastic card. Really like Cat going in. 
I think there are main strats for the deck. Keg control, burn to level GP, and timelines. Okay, so let's talk about those. We can do keg control, which is about using uh, all the powder kegs. So options for that would be like Dreadway Deckhand, who's a two mana two, two and a summons creates a powder keg. You could also use light them up, knock them down, which is a burst mana spell that creates a burst spell two mana that creates a powder keg and then creates a knock them down in your hand, which deals one damage to anything that's slow. We also have Boom Ship and Petty Officer. This one deals one damage to a unit and summons powder kegs equal to the number of damage dealt. It's not a very great card, but for some reason I have a prismatic of it uh and then P petty officer which is a three mana three one that can create a random one cost follower or summon a powder keg and this can often work well with uh p and z because p and z has a lot of different burn options and then these different kegs will be used to help amplify those spells uh, and if we did play this, the only ones you really want to consider, Dreadhand, Deckhand, Dreadway Deckhand is a must if you're going to play kick Control, and is probably good enough to just put in here anyway, even if we don't play Keg Control. Kegs with Kitty's spell is kind of hilarious. Yeah, if we can get that off once, then uh, I'm putting that, then that's going to be the, like, that's going to be the thumbnail, is me just Kitty Kegging people. Uh, line them up, knock them down is all right in like a Nami deck, but I actually don't think it's that great here. And Petty Officer only having one health is just an extreme detriment in this game with all of the one mana pings, one mana damage that's going around. So if we do lean into powder kegs, we're doing so at a bit of a detriment by playing some cards that aren't particularly good in the meta. However, Dreadhead, Dreadway Deckhand's probably good enough to be played no matter what. So that's an option we consider is keg control with a little bit of burn. And the uh, P and Z region gives us plenty of different burn through Mystic Shot. We also, of course, have Make It Rain from uh, Bilgewater, which is two mana to one damage to three randomly targeted enemies and the or the enemy Nexus. Uh, Mystic Shot, two damage to anything for two mana. These things could all get buffed with the spell. One card that I absolutely like and I mentioned earlier in the intro is Ballistic Bot. Ballistic Bot is a 2-mana 1-3 with Augment, which means whenever you play a created card, he gets plus 1 plus 0. Oh. And it says, Round Start, create an Ignition in hand. An Ignition is a 1-mana slow that deals 1 damage to the enemy Nexus. Doesn't seem all that powerful, but it's useful for discard fodder. It's also pretty useful to just slowly ping down your enemy Nexus, which is extremely good with Gangplank. Gangplank wants you to do one damage to the enemy Nexus. Our friend Ballistic Ba here literally gives us a card that does exactly that. So I'm gonna put him anyway. Another option we have is Burn to Level GP and Timelines. So Burn to Level GP is kind of where Ballistic Ba like shines. I think he's pretty useful in any build, but then we could put in more options to help burn him like the Make It Rains and things like that. I think that might kind of go hand in hand with Keg Control anyway. And then the op your other options is Timelines. And Timelines uh, says, for the rest of the game, the first time you play follower each round, pick one of three followers of the same to cost to transform it into, of the same cost to transform it into. This is a pretty fun card. It's very random and is usually played in a deck that gets you value upon playing a unit because you get the value anyway, and then it usually is understated because it got you extra value in some other way. And so then you could use timelines to actually make its stats better. So that's an option we could go. It becomes kind of a very different kind of deck. And we like to play a lot of, we wouldn't be playing Ballistic Bot, for example, if we wanted to go the timeline way. Dreadway Combat doesn't work anymore. It's just a value deck now. So you can play dorky units that generate value like the three one that makes a keg and give them better stats. Sure. Not the Ledros combo, but the Rex combo. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, is the Rex combo does still work. It's not as easy to pull off. No, it's not a sure kill, though. You're right. It's not like Ledros where it was a sure kill. But it is kind of fun if you get it to happen. But otherwise, yeah, you just make it as a value deck that, like, uses... So, yeah, you wouldn't play Ballistic Bot, so it's a little bit counterintuitive to this. Me, personally, I'm a big fan of Burn, and I really like uh, Burn in this deck in this game and with these two regions i'm kind of like the keg control slash burn thing actually help echo helps you find the tp if you do timeline kegs you can do dreadway as a kill combo actually echo helps you find the pieces we could go that route but i think that's shying away from gangplank it'll be a lot harder to get gangplank to level in that timeline stack you could run time trick or you could use 
uh, bone skewer on echo to get time tricks and then it puts echo on top of the deck and then you can use time trick to shuffle echo away yeah it sounds like a terrible idea. to find better cards cards that don't require <laughs> you to play a region i'm not playing echo is going to be rough because he probably won't level up all that option all that much he's literally just a value generator it's hard to find synergy with echo game plank it's basically you basically choose one and I'm not choosing Echo because he needs Sharima to be good. So instead, I'm going to build a P and Z burn deck with Gangplank, and I'm going to run Timeline. Timeline kind of does both. My biggest issue with Timeline is I think Ballistic Bot is the best option for a Gangplank P and Z deck. There's a good stat unit, then low enough for Shark. Echo is removal bait, I guess. Yeah, basically. I mean, you, or he's a free time, he's a two mana time trick. Like, eh. He's a good stat unit to get them low enough for Shark. I mean, if you hit time trick with practical perfectionist, then you have a greater chance of leveling up Echo. Yeah. My concern about practical perfectionist is who do I hit with her in this deck? Because right now I don't really want to duplicate anything. I mean, we may just play her as a three mana four two that shuffles the deck and then skip literally every time with the exception of like maybe one or two cards. I guess I'm trying to think of a deck that doesn't feel like a worse Ezreal gangplank. Well, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of the time in Champion Slot Machine, that's kind of what we get. I would like it to be different, but the designers have just tied my hands with Echo because this is the only other card beside Time Trick. And honestly, I don't really like it. I kind of want to just take it out of the deck anyway. I think you just don't run Perfectionist. Yeah, Echo leveling up never happens in PNZ only. Exactly. And so I'm just going to play Echo and Time Trick just because Time Trick's a good card and whatever. There's once in a blue moon it might happen if I find two, tri two or three Time Trick and Echo strikes once. But I don't think I want to play Practical Perfectionist, to be honest. I just don't think the card is good. I think the card is good if you're building a Sharima deck that's or some other deck that's putting cards in your deck that you want to see. The only cards that we're putting in our deck that we want to see is a leveled Echo, and <laughs> we have to level him first. It's really only good with Gohard. Yeah, it's pretty decent with Gohard. Or any deck that's like wants to build counterfeit copies, but I don't know what the other decks there are. Why isn't Echo's champ spell time trick, by the way? That would be really nice. It would be really helpful. I think in general, they try to not have the champ's build be the same as a spell that can generate. Like, Ezreal's champ spell isn't Mystic Shot. I mean, is Mystic Shot, which is, I think, one of the only exceptions, but all the others don't really do that, right? Does anyone else? Yeah, like, Zoe's isn't super cool star chart. There's a few other examples. It's weird, though. I guess it's not a tried and true rule, because Ezreal breaks that. <clears throat> but anyway, speaking of uh, Mystic Shot, we should probably just put that in here because I almost never don't put that in. A... It's in every PNZ deck I build. Uh, or after Echo's levels, you can get more of the rallies. Sure, if you can find a way to realistically level Echo before you see her, which is just... It's just tough and not Shirima. And that's one of the things that's holding Echo back is a fantastic design. I think he's one of the coolest champs they've made in this game. But they only gave him really one other card to predict. And it, it makes no sense. It's absolutely baffling to me. There is no other champion in this game that is shackled to a region they aren't in. Uh, some more things that we can play in these two regions. I kind of like the uh, keg burn idea in the gangplank because like what value are we going to get for <clears throat> for like a timelines? I guess we could transform feline. We'd take ballistic bot out. Dragon deckhand is already pretty good stats, but it gives us a powder keg and then we could possibly upgrade him. So I'm trying to ping them every turn. I guess I'm playing kegs. I kind of like keg burn. I think keg burn is kind of where I'm at right here. So do we play light them up? I'm not sure. There are some other units I want to play. So here's an interesting idea. Do we play? Nobody plays this card, but it's one of my favorite cards in the game. Funsmith. Because whenever I play PNZ Bilgewater, I kind of want to make a Funsmith deck. Because I love Funsmith. She's amazing with a leveled up gameplay. She's pretty decent with Ballistic Bot. She works well with Make It Rain and Mystic Shot and all that stuff. And if I can get a Fallen Felines, like, gem, that would be kind of crazy. I like Funsmith. I'm going to build a Funsmith deck in Bilgewater. 
Spill the funsmith sounds fun to say it bluntly. Yeah, I mean, this chick just like looks like fun. I want to hang out as long as I'm not on the receiving end of that thing. I like funsmith a lot. So let's try a funsmith keg deck. So we're playing kegs. We should probably just run the three unit. He just dies to lots of pings, but it's probably worth it. Do we unpilfered goods and and uh, what's his name? The black market merchant combo. You think light him up might be better than the three mana unit? Then Petty Officer? Yeah, I just, every time I look at this guy, I just think of Make It Rain, of Pokey Stick, of Twisted Fate, like, and this guy just gets way and way less cool. All right, I'm with you guys on that one. Let's try it. Let's even, let's even put the other one in just so that way we have, I forget the alphabet whenever I'm looking through things that use the alphabet. Oh, we're throwing three copies in, but we'll, we can change numbers at any time. Here's the idea. Do we play Cheery and Sump Worker? Be kind of funny with Funsmith and with Barrels, huh? Because Sump Works, Sump Work uh, Posse, one man, one damage to everything, amplified with Barrels or with Funsmith, could be kind of strong. Bilgewater doesn't give us anything to help make these, so the only thing we would have is Iterative Improvement and another copy of it is plus Time Trick to maybe find it. Don't think it'll work in these regions. Yeah, I'm just worried that the only way we can get another copy is drawing a second one, time tricking for a second one or iterative improvement and it would give us a reason to run the four to predict that's true this guy would actually give us a reason to run the four to predict i mean this champion slot machine guys we're here to have fun maybe we should try this just throw the hexies up all right screw it let's try to make more sump workers let's do a sump worker burn uh, sump worker kegs deck uh, so we're going to run Iterative Improvement. Oh, I should probably go over this card for you, too. Uh, so Cheerian Sump Worker is a 2-mana 1-2 with Elusive. When you summon another Cheerian Sump Worker, obliterate me and transform all allied Cheerian Sump Workers everywhere into Sump Work Posses. And Sump Work Posses are absolutely busted. They're 2-mana four twos with Elusive, and they say attack, deal 1 damage to the enemy nexus and all uh, to all two enemies and the enemy nexus. Man, if I had only learned to read. Uh, there, it's so, a powerful card, and you have to kind of build around making more of them, which actually works really well with one of the cards we talked about before that does the predict and makes extra copies, which is Practical Perfectionist. And then, of course, we run Iterative Improvement. So where is that? At? Iterative Improvement is a two-mana burst speed spell. Pick a follow-up, create a copy of man with plus one, plus one. Obviously, really good with Tyrion Sump Workers. We can make a second copy that has an extra bit of health and damage to make it harder to kill. So we're going to put that card in. And this deck is actually almost built already. What am I missing here? We put in one copy of Power for Copies? No. No, we need to draw. We need to draw cards. So do we just run a copy of Progress Day? Aim at a burst speed spell, draw three, then reduce those cards' costs by one. So it's kind of like a five mana draw three when you think about it, if you actually use the cards. But I do think we need to draw cards because we really have no way of doing so right now. Or do we just run the four mana draw card? Salvage, four mana, toss two, draw two. First. We can run that, or we could get even spicier and just run double up. Five mana fast, deal two to an enemy. If it kills it, deal four to the enemy nexus. I tell you, you know who loves this card is Fod Smith or the Barrels. They, this thing is a blast with those. What is my Twitter? What is my Twitch? Why do I keep calling it Twitter? Oh my God. What is, what does my Twitch community think of the idea of running a double up? And if so, how many? Um, double up is rough with all the bounce, with all the Ionia rapid running around. It is expensive. Hard to get people to drop mana before you play it. Okay, that's fair. Maybe you don't run it. Maybe we got already four drops. We don't need another four drop and zap spray fin, so we won't run him. Honestly, I think I want to drop one light him up to trim a slot. I think everything else I really like. And then I want to find something that I can put two of in. I'm just not sure what it is. I think I do want to draw cards. Double up could be cute, but I don't think it'll be worth it since we aren't super aggro. Yeah, it's true. We're pretty control heavy. How about Shock Blast? We just blast two two people into oblivion. It's not drawing card, but it's two for one. Shock Blast could do four damage with some of our different buffs. We don't gain value out of six plus spells, but it, we could go Augmented Experimenter. 
It's a little rough with the gangplank at five, but maybe. Hmm. Let's try it. Let's just put in Hogmanagy Spearman. There's a six mana three three that says play, discard your hand, draw three, deal two to an enemy. It would mean we have to discard our hand, but once again, as I said, we don't have a lot of cards. We we're gonna burn out of cards pretty quick because our entire deck is basically three or less mana, with the exception of like a few cards. And so we're gonna use them all very quickly, and then we're gonna have we're gonna need more cards and He's a decent way to do it. It's a we draw out a draw out a steam option. Exactly. It's a way to try and get yourself out of a really bad situation. Alrighty. Well, that is, I think, our last two card slots. And this is the deck we're gonna try to build today. I mean, try to win with today. We're gonna use Fallen Feline to get some Hexite Crystals in our deck. We'll try to find them with some of Predicts. We'll use Ballistic Pot to hopefully consistently level up Gangplank. We'll try to get Cheery and Sump Worker active. He'll also help towards Gangplank while also just being an insane win condition if he's able to survive. Dreadway Deckhand is just a solid card. Uh, Aider Improvement to help with the Cheery and Sump Worker. Two Light him Up to help make barrels and control the board. A Make It Rain to help control the board. Same with Mystic Shot. Also can help win the game. Time Trick is just a fantastic card for helping find cards we need, especially if we use we need it to help win the game to do a mystic shot for example uh it also buffs find more copies of cheery and sump worker practical affections can do the same thing but also has the uh, bonus of possibly copying them the downside is if it's not something we want to copy we're gonna have to skip which does suck but it is what it is echo we've already gone over fun smith uh is great at buffing all the cards and automated experience to help us bail out of a dead hand. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how it performs. Alrighty. So, this is a fantastic opening hand. Does the Mystic Shot get value against our opponents? Yes. The 3-2 um, with Challenger. I want this whole hand. I'm keeping this whole hand. This hand's fantastic. Oh my god! Could you ask your brother if it's possible to force a math random varial in Java? I don't know if he works with JavaScript. Do you work with Java all that much, Reese? I use Java very little. <clears throat> Mostly he works with um, like Unity and he works with the uh, Twitch and C Sharp. Yeah, he usually works with C Sharp. Once I stab papers, now faces. Once I stab papers, now faces. That was my worst one yet. They will burn like we did. Oh man, that guy sucks. I don't have an answer for him. But fortunately, he doesn't have an answer for my Cheery and Sump Worker next turn. I mean, other than like a single combat. No reinforcement. Well, if he's just gonna attack into this, then I'm just gonna get rid of this guy. I mean, he could have a one mana tough. All right, cool. I'll take that. You guys just attack here. I'm worried that if I play Sump Worker, he can't single combat it, actually. I'm gonna play it. He's probably gonna play a dragon here. Like Shivana. Yeah. I'm just gonna play this guy. We're gonna make him a little sad with damage to his face. Alright, that's. And we're already three turns on Gangplank on turn five, four. We are doing really well for leveling him up, if we ever see him. <laughs> I think I just want to do this. So that way he can block the Shivana if need be. Plus it's also another point turns so Gangplank level up. Actually, I think I just take this. I think I'm just gonna take this to the face. Actually, I don't see any reason not to kill this guy. 
sharp sight to kill him? These sharp sights there, do I care? Maybe, because I'm pretty much killing him. Yeah, whatever. He can just hit me in the face. I don't give a crap. I want to keep my reactive spell alive, but I only have one. Yeah, we want to bait the sharp sight. Oh, you're sure? Because then he could use it to kill this. Yeah. Maybe it was a good idea. Yeah, you're right. So we can attack with Shirin. Yeah, no, you're right. I probably should have tried to bait out a one there. He would have been an idiot to play it there, to be honest, because, like, he knows I have an elusive unit that does a fudge ton of damage, so. All right, well, Gangplank's leveled next turn, so there's that. All right, well, if you're going to do that, then we're doing this. It's just the way it be. See? It all worked out in the end. I guess uh, Gangplank's not level up. Not level up before I play him, at least. I mean, he'll literally level up upon attacking. Oh, it's Demacia Shadow Isles Dragons. I haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, I've tried to build it. It's a really tough build. Tough build to make work. I think I just attack. Because he could play something and then single combat my sump worker. If I do this, he has to sharp sight? And then I don't get the overwhelm attack from Gangplank. Nah, I think I do play the Gangplank. Because the sump worker will buff it with his ability. Demacians, fight for your king! Okay, we're just gonna do this. Actually, we're just going to attack because if he blocks, the barrier is destroyed by the Sumpork Posse's ability. Flathlid had a decent version before Clutch got buffed. Interesting. I haven't seen it. So that puts him to three? I like that. Ba -na 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 -na. Three health it is. Just goes to show you how dead Echo is. I haven't even considered playing him. It's pretty sad. All right. He attacks with this. I'll block with this. Um. <laughs> Am I about to be so disrespectful to just play Augmented Experimenter and just pitch these Echoes? Nah, I don't think that's the correct answer. I don't think any of these is the correct answer. I think we just skip. He passes here? I think there was an argument for GP spell on face pre-attack for lethal last turn. No, because it wouldn't have done more damage because... The the barrel the barrel was already going off with the Cheerian Sump or the Sump Orc Posse. I'll play this first. Slip through my paws. <laughs> okay. Do you have a single combat? Or a sharp sight? Interesting. Neither the flames nor the deaths can play. I don't think there's anything at slow speed that's going to make a difference. Would have pushed one more damage to face and one more with overwhelm plus one from spell is three. Maybe you're right. I don't remember it well enough to be able to chime in, but maybe. I think we do this. Hope he doesn't have an answer for it. I mean, it's lethal before combat damage even happens. So he's going to have a single combat. Sharp Sight won't do enough. He has it. Of course he does. Coward. That sucks. 
Well, if you're right, then I'm about to lose because of it. I did not expect, I really did not expect that three drop that heals. It's kind of crazy to me. <sighs> I don't know why I attacked with the dragon chow, but that's the next level sh I don't know about. <clears throat> I think I just take this. Where are you? Back in the game. Justice will be served. Well, that is suck. This guy's got too much life steal. He's gonna win. He's thinking about single combating my Echo right now. But he is deciding it against it. I'm gonna play this first. Yeah, knew that was happening. Please give me burn. You can't develop next turn, I think. Hmm? I'm I must be a, I'm sorry, I must be a little bit behind. I must be too far behind. I mean, yeah, that's gonna happen no matter what. I, don't have a chance. I can't literally can't do anything about it, so is what it is. There goes that. Yeah, we're done. Oh, yeah. This thing's just going to heal too much. So we're out of here. Too much healing. Legitimately didn't see it coming. And I guess I misplayed, so hey, I guess I deserved it. Like I said, good thing I'm at zero LP. Don't bother me. Sump worker seems good, especially if we need an Ezreal block. And we got the time trick. Another perfectionist. It was a parlay face hope for no sharp sight line that one turn. Yep. One of them old missile misplays. Yep, that'll do. I think I'm playing this cat. I'm sorry the cat showed up late and took your turn, Dreadway Deckhand. It was pretty rude of it, but... This is going to be necessary because I'm playing this this turn. Although he's going to very easily kill it with a mystic shot, but that's the world we live in. Do I do it? Do I just duplicate time tricks? I'm doing it, whatever. It's probably a bad idea, but I'm doing it. Did someone get lost in the time stream? Did someone get lost in the time stream? Never Ooh, it's a go hard deck, and he found his go hard. Interesting. Go hard, Caitlyn. Caitlyn as go hard, huh? All right. We always attack with Kitty there. We had a um, yeah, we had make it rain. Yeah, so I could ping it for one of the Nexus. I thought I would get better value out of that later and save my spell mana, but... There's a decent argument for that. That may have been the correct play. I've already got a lot of time tricks in the deck, so I'm going to play the Fallen Feline, see if we can get some... Alright, we're passing there. We'll burn his one mana. He clearly doesn't have anything anyway. Ooh! All right, so this turn we're playing this guy. The nice thing about this side like crystal is he doesn't know we have it. Yeah. I think we just attack here. I don't want him killing my sump worker until I find another one, so we just attack here. Okay. Look. Predict away. Honestly, I should probably be running that card. <laughs> I 
She's really good with the Hexite Crystal. If it's one of those top spells. I do not hit this guy, although that means there's one at the top of the deck. I'm gonna do this. Ooh, that's fun. I think we just pass here because I can't play two of them. If he tries to open attack this, and we play this Hexite Crystal, probably. Because it kills it and does three damage to the Nexus. Actually, she'll do just that on her own. So do I Hexite Crystal here, or do I let this go and then play the Fun Smith? I think I might Hexite Crystal here just to get rid of the unit and do two to three to face. I think it's worth it. Might have a mystic shot for my sump worker. Suck. I mean, he probably does. I'm trying to play Fun Smith next turn anyway. Well, what have we here? Alright, so we've transformed our sump workers. Let's see if we can find another one. <sighs> Unfortunately, it just basically counts as removal for him because it's just two cards that he gets to obliterate with one of his. Always the problem with some worker. Well, we're running this guy to hopefully draw some more cards. Oh, you're only at two. That's so bad, dude. Is that this vital bad? I think I need to get these out of my hand, so I have to play one. Harder to kill. No, oh, he's got a lot of mana up. Ah, I don't know. This is a bad. This is a tough call. Jeez. He's playing Piercing Darkness main board. Wow. Okay. Get rid of this chick. That makes it dangerous for fun smith in the future. Alright, something not expensive. Oh wait, opponent is catalog control. This deck is fun to play, but annoying to play against. Oh yeah, I'm noticing that. Oh yeah, he just got rid of one of the best options I had to play against him. It's just all removal. Well, that's fun. Catalog control. Never played against it before. But it makes me sad. All right, we're gonna get that two damage in, boys. Yeah, yeah. Pow. Okay. I don't have any cards dead. I mean, he's just gonna discard this, right? He got rid of my only ability to draw cards. It's a, it's a deck just exactly like this that'll just freaking destroy this deck. I just have no chance against it. I literally have no chance. It's also a lot of healing. Like, I'm just going to keep running into Shadow Owls today. I don't know. Making a fun smith. Okay. Dang. I don't know. I don't like what he's got planned. I guess double Gohards while this Funsmith is on the board. That's what I'm guessing. It runs the fading memories. Interesting. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Well, we probably just lose here. But this looks like a fun deck. I might play it sometime. He just has another one. Of course he does. Boom him for three. All right, we just lose here, so. No sense in continuing. I'm not gonna let him to him. I'm a cock tease. I don't like to let him come. We don't have a way to protect some worker. Then he just removal for my opponent. 
So we're going to drop that package. I don't want the experimenter. I think we're in a control heavy deck. I think we're like a pin control deck. So I don't think I want her either. I mean, want that either. Um, so I actually kind of like Shock Blast as a two of. It's uh, six slow, deal three to a unit or enemy nexus and three to another. So I think I want to do the Black Market Merchant and the Piltover Goods Comp. I mean, um, Pilfer Goods Combo. I think it's helping us. We're doing too many things at the same time. Yeah. Uh, now I'm just trying to go into more of a control deck. It's just a ping control deck that slowly burns you while also controlling your board and then eventually ending up in the gangplank, right? And so this is, a, I think, a bit more streamlined. And we already are trying to deal damage to them in return, so Black Market Merchant plus Pilfered Goods can help us draw more cards and keep the game going. And then I think we're just still on ping control. So if we run into... Um, if we run into Bandle Tree, we're going to want an Aftershock, so I want to put one of those in there. <laughs> so my my question to you is, what do you think is the better card? Uh, salvage? Or uh, Progress Day? I'm not sure which one I like better. Progress Day draws you a lot and makes them cheaper, which is nice. But there is something to spend about four mana draw, as opposed to having to have eight. Yeah, they do both kind of suck. That's why nobody plays them, but I literally, like, draw is scarce, right? So that doesn't matter. Pool Shark? My worry about Pool Shark is I have four, five, and six mana stuff, and I'm a kind of a control deck. I don't want to be forced to using a card. I could just use Zonite Urchin, but she has to discard, so it's not really getting us there. Fortune Croaker does not trigger off a of Funsmith. Fortune Croaker might be a decent idea, actually. Because the thing is, Pool Shark's not actually drawing your card. He's basically uh, a free one to himself, but it's fleeting. And so if it's like a Gangplank or something and I drop him on three, then I'm going to be really sad. I'm going to try out two copies of Fortune Croaker to help get a body on field while drawing another card. Do we have enough units for Croaker? We have 23 units and only feline dies to him so i think so yeah plus we also have barrels if we really need to we can kill a barrel if it's not going to be worth it we'll try to croak i mean i don't really like croaker honestly um i'm gonna split the difference between the two cards that kind of suck unfortunately oh actually you know what there's an option hold up we could do zap sprayfin zap sprayfin sounds like a much better idea yeah, Zap sounds much better. All right, let's try this. It's a bit more controly. We took out the Cheery and Sump Worker, like, Surge combo. We're mostly just a controly burn deck that's going to use, like, Barrels and Funsmith to try and deal damage to remove your units, control the board, and level up Gangplank. And then Echo's here. <laughs> that's all I have to say about Echo. He's around. My only concern about that is that we have Zaps, Funsmith, and Echo at the four drop. So deck's a little four heavy now. But it's a control deck, so that shouldn't be as much of an issue. Oh, like the cat. And then I'm gonna keep everything else. Alright. Uh. You got to turn one play, my friend? No? All right, cool. Time. I need more time. Time. I need more time. <laughs> we open with an attack. I've worked up something special. I'm going to pass, right? Oh, he has no way to do two damage for one mana. Once I snap papers, All right. faces. We will wait for him to try and do stuff, and then we will Mystic Shot. He's playing Ezreal Twisted Fate. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna leave open Mystic Shot mana. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Oh, Marilyn the dog. Oh, I said that name completely wrong. Let me pull this up so I'm not butchering people's names. I don't know why I tried to look at that and not just my stream thing. Why is my stream manager so slow? 
Well, thank you, Merlit the dog. I think that's it's close to your name. Um, I really appreciate you for the follow, my friend. Thank you so much. It means the world to me, honestly. Okay. So he gets the one damage to... I mean, he gets the extra damage to face, I guess. I think I have to block this? He's just doing too much damage. That's right. Uh, Marilda is my dog. <laughs> awesome. That's a cool name. Marilda. I am a dog lover myself. In fact, I, uh, I could exploit my dog for some views right now by bringing her in here. She's adorable. I don't think I do this. He's doing a lot of damage, but I might... No, I don't know. He's a control deck. I think I need to keep this guy alive. What kind of dog is it? If you don't mind me asking. Okay, if we're trading zaps, then that's the life we live. You can't do this. That's the life we're living. Uh, I think he's doing too much damage. I'm probably gonna have to play. I'm not the block with this ballistic bot next turn. Merilda is the name of people here in Brazil. Is a caramel dog. Is oh, it's like a caramel colored dog. Merilda is a more popular name in Brazil. Oh, Merilda. I like the name. Good dog name too. Merilda. Um, we're just gonna do this, cause like, I can't keep taking this damage. Yep. No. Am I, um, what did I do wrong? Alright. You're saying no, people shouldn't do it more? <laughs> or it's not a good dog name? <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, cool! We got a one mana cheaper thermogenic beam. That's awesome. Thank you, game. That's so kind of you. Echoes continues to be a useless card. I guess I could thermo beam this guy. It's probably the best, biggest thermo beam threat I got. I love how laughing is typed as KKK in Brazil and how it makes no sense to people outside of it. Lol. Oh, I didn't know that's what it meant. I, I kind of assumed, but like, I didn't really know for sure. That's pretty funny though. I think this is a bad idea. I'm just gonna pass. He has more mana than me. I'm playing a control deck. I'm just gonna let it go. Just gonna pass. No, let's do this. I really want to pilfered goods while I have this guy out. So I'm going to do this. Hey, what's your main deck? Um, I climb a lot with Lurk, primarily. Um, I also ha uh, have climbed to Masters a few times with Ezreal, Teemo decks. Uh, and I also am a big fan of... Um, there's this uh, Go Hard... RE uh, list that I that I was given by uh, one of my guys infinite patrons that I use the climb into diamond and that is a very good deck <clears throat> he just has another one huh yep that happens need this to block taking too many hits why would he do that what? What? I don't like as in lore. Why not? I think he's fun. I'm I'm the type of person that likes burn people in the face. Like I when I play Magic the Gathering, I used to play a red deck because I'm one of those guys that just likes to smort people. I mean, he could have another Ezreal that's a Mystic Shot on this Echo, which would suck, but, like, Echo's just Never lost fodder bait anyway. Okay. Hold it, partner. That's fair. I 
guess. Let's play this guy. Let's pass. Actually, I'd prefer if you didn't have an Ezreal, if I'm being honest. Actually, no, it's screw that. Screw it. You got legs. Use them. What champion in what champion needs a rework in lore? Uh, there's a few of them I would say. Katarina definitely. Or um, yeah, Kindred's a good one, but Katarina, hundred percent. She just needs to be completely reworked. Um, and see anyone else really? I mean, she's just like glaringly obvious, but. Okay, you gave me one too. Yay. This guy draws me cards. Nice. Katarina just didn't cost one extra mana when she so much, up. So much and boring play said, with Kat. Well, the other pro the problem with Kat is she's one of the only champions in the game. She's the only champion in the game who gets more expensive when she levels up. But it needs to be that way. Because if she didn't. Oh man, he's drawing like a mofo. Because if it didn't work what that way, I... then um, if it's just three mana, then it would be a three mana rally, which is going to get kind of insane as we have learned in the past. Ooh, Gangplank's great here. What if Katarina just said... Um... She didn't cost extra mana, and she just said when I'm summoned, start a free attack with me. When I'm summoned, start a free attack, then she'd be absolutely nuts, because then you'd have no way to stop her without fast speed spells. You could never hit her with a slow speed spell, ever. But it would just be three mana, three damage. Or three mana, four damage. Um... And your opponent could put blockers in the way that are bigger, although they wouldn't kill her. Uh, but it would burn your mana. She'd still have the recalling factor. So Both Cat and Kindred are like one buff away from breaking the game, but at the same time useless. Yeah, I know. That's the problem with their designs. But so many kids said Kindred needs a rework, but I like him. First of all, it's a them. Okay, let's all, you know, be gender conscious here. But, um... Yeah, the free attack is an interesting idea, but let, once again, you would never be able to hit her with like so speed spells. It would become um, it would become a very interesting kind of game. If I could get some ways of dealing damage to his nexus, that would be really nice. Suppose you want in on this. Oh, suppose I should leave you, buddy. I don't know if Kindred needs rework. I think that her effect should happen, maybe happen a little sooner or something like that. Hard to say. I'm just gonna block this guy so I take as little damage as possible. We're gonna time trick first. It's a weird call by me, but whatever. We're gonna do this. And then we're gonna wait for him to do something. He didn't do anything. Interesting. Huh. Well, he must have just lethal in hand. He must have a mystic shot and to get excited. My kindred used to be a uh, him when they were a single being, and though in real life, but them is correct. What's your main deck? Oh, his main deck. I don't know. What is his main? Deck? Okay. It's not exactly legal, but it is exactly awesome. One damage to face, Mystic Shot. Oh! We're gonna pass. We're gonna wait. Wait for him to go for the kill. Because I have an open attack lethal with Gangplank, so he has to go for the kill. I'll show him pain. Now let's just do this and see what he does in response.
Is it enough? Yeah! We got it! Hell yeah! Oh, we got a game! One win! This'll do for now. <laughs> that is a very accurate win line, too. This'll do for now. <laughs> <laughs> Never a more fitting dialogue from a winning win. <laughs> It's like they don't make stupid mistakes and just give you free wins. Diamond players are harder to play against than challenger players. You mean masters? Masters, or masters players, yeah. Yeah, it's because diamond players are still trying to get into masters, and masters players sometimes are just f around. <laughs> exactly. Um, your plans, indeed. Don't attack into that. That's pretty much the best opening we could ask for. Oh, please give me the Hexite Crystal! It's happened to me so many times, it just feels so good when it happens to my opponent. It's too late, man. I already took it. <laughs> I already took it. You should have done that before you attacked. Get up and f it up. <clears throat> ah, so glorious. Time, uh, one of the most broken cards in the game without actually having to work for it. It's just amazing. We poke again. Oh, he's still got another one in there. You can find it. Let's grab two more. Alright. We're good. Echo, you were supposed to be here tomorrow. Yesterday, good one, Zill. High five, yeah. All right, guy, let's go. Oh, I'm going to burn a card. Sorry, Zap. I'm sorry. Now, does he surrender? That's the question. Does he surrender to the Hexkite crystal I stole from him? Oh man, he's gonna get the stupid. He got Chrono Break, are you kidding me? Oh, he didn't. He didn't! He didn't! Oh, I have a shot! Woo! He picked it so fast, I just assumed. He picked it so fast, I just assumed the worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is huge. We just shut him down hard. I think I want to get this guy out here to predict. I gotta love that predicting predict cards from our opponent. Actually, we might level Echo this time. That's so funny. You've got time tricks in hand. Yeah. Wait, how did you even get that card? Her? I stole it from him. Oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I just keep stealing shit from him. You gotta run the net so that you can predict. <laughs> yeah, I gotta steal the predicts from my opponent in order to make it work. I also have an absolver, so e leveling Echo might be the only way that happens, you know? <laughs> What do we get out of this? Ooh, a shock blast. That seems good. Because then I can block with this guy and shock blast. Okay. 
okay. I don't care. Alright, now I care. You wanna try and get her out this right now? He doesn't run get excited. No, because she could take damage from this and then a mystic shot next turn. I think I want to iterative my zap. Yeah. Then I'll pass to him. Let's start with her. Another time bomb, my god. I only played Zillion once, right? Try a shock blast here. That seemed to work. He has to play a unit now. See what I've learned? Prefer to you to this guy's just gonna die anyway, so I might as well attack. Better dead than top side. Alright, we're doing alright. Prevent one damage here. Okay, he gets the extra damage in. Or does he? Nah, I'm just gonna solve it. Feline, didn't play Zap. I forgot about Feline Zap combo. Maybe I'll get lucky. Did we get there? Nope, some poor dude. Stop us, huh? You son beach. Ooh, look who's leveled. Yeah, we got another win. 